section 9.4, we're going to talk about angles that uh, come from secants and tangents. So a couple of new kinds of angles. So far we've talked about angles that have their vertex either at the center or on the circle. So for our first, for our first new kind of angle today, we have a, one more that has its vertex uh, on the circle. And then our other angles are going to have the vertex at some other point other than the center and the circle. So our first theorem tells us that if we have a tangent and a secant that intersect at the tangent point. So our tangent here is this line and our secant is this line. They're intersecting at the tangent point. The measure of the angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. And here our arc goes from the tangent point here at V all the way around to A. Now this is just like our inscribed angle where our vertex is on the circle. The angle is half the arc. So this is the same rule as, as our inscribed angle where angles, uh, our vertex is on the circle. Uh, if you want to, this is in your, um, in your flip book on the bottom of the second page. If you want to add this to your flip book, we probably won't have time to add everything to our flip book today, but we'll have some time on Monday to complete our flip book if we don't get everything in there. If you wanted to put some numbers in here as an example, you could say that the measure of arc um, VA, if this arc is 160 degrees, then our angle is 80 degrees. On the bottom of the second page, you have a circle and it says VC is tangent at V, line VC is tangent at V. should be right below our inscribed angle. So what we have is the measure of the angle is half the measure of the arc, or the measure of the arc is two times the measure of the angle. If you wanted to use shorthand, you could say the angle equals the arc divided by two, or the arc equals two times the angle would be our shorthand for this. All right, does everyone have this? And we'll do, we'll do several examples. We have three different things that we're talking about. We'll do several examples right at the end. All right, so our next, let me, our next theorem. And this is for the vertex of our angle inside the circle, but not at the center. Our vertex is not at the center. The measure of the angle formed by two secants or chords. So our, here we have two secants. If we looked at just the segments, we would have chords. The measure of the angle is half the sum of the intercepted arcs. So the measure of angle AVC, my angle here, is the measure of arc AC plus the measure of arc DV, DB divided by 2, half the sum. I add the two arcs together, divide by 2, and that gives me the angle. And this is for my vertex inside the circle, not at the center. And our shorthand is the angle equals the arc plus the arc divided by 2. And we, can use, we could use this angle and these two arcs, or we could figure out this angle from these two arcs. So it just depends on which angle and which arc we're interested in. Uh-huh. And this, if you want to put this on your, in your flip book, this is on the bottom of the first page. We have a circle with two intersecting chords.
So the angle is the arc plus the arc divided by 2. Bottom of the first page, right. You should, you'll have a circle that looks like this, and instead of lines, it just has chords. Are we all good on this? No, no, no. Not yet? Okay. Okay, we got it? All right, let's look at our last, last relationship that we're going to talk about today. This is for our vertex outside the circle. So we have two lines that intersect, two segments that intersect outside the circle. So the measure of our angle formed by two secants, tangents, or a secant and a tangent. So we have two lines that intersect outside the circle. To find that angle, it's half the difference of the intercepted arc. So we're looking at this little angle in here, angle ABC, right in here. This angle is arc BD, the measure of arc BD, minus the measure of arc AC divided by 2. So it's arc minus the arc divided by 2. Gives us the measure of the angle. Or our shorthand is the angle equals the arc minus the arc divided by 2. And if you want to add this one to your flip book, this is on the bottom of the third page. And there are a couple of more that are like this that will add into your flip book on Monday. But if you get this one on the bottom of your, bottom of your third page, it has a drawing like this that you can add, add this information to. And this is for our vertex outside the circle. I'm going to just move this over. So if our vertex, our rule for our vertex outside the circle is the angle equals the arc minus the arc divided by 2. And you want to, when you do these problems, you want to subtract the smaller arc from the bigger arc. We don't want to get a negative number. So we're going to start with the bigger arc and subtract the smaller arc so we don't get a negative number. Any questions so far? And our last page is going to be a few examples using these kinds of problems. We all, everybody have this? No. Not yet? No. Okay. Whoa. I didn't know I could do that. Yes. I'm sorry? The vertex inside the circle, how you get the arc, 
Um, we will we will add that to the flipbook on Monday. Okay. All right. Are we good? Let's look at a couple of examples. Let me pull this up first. Um, All right, so our first example. This is our vertex, our vertex on the circle. This is a secant and a tangent. This is the same thing that we wrote before. If the, if the arc is 80 degrees, I'm sorry, if the angle is 80 degrees, the arc is 160 degrees. So if you wanted to put that in your flip book, if you want to write that down, label the angles in your flip book, you could. So this is just like the rule we learned before for, um, for our vertex on the circle. And remember, our arc goes all the way from the tangent point all the way around here to A. All right, are we all good with this one? All right, I'm going to go to I'm going to go to this example. So, here's an example with our with our vertex, our vertex inside the circle, and we want to find x. So, we know that the angle, this angle is 50 degrees. This arc is 80 degrees. We want to find the measure of this little arc over here. So our vertex is inside the circle. We know that the angle equals the arc plus the arc divided by 2. So we're going to plug in everything we have into that formula and solve for what we don't have. The angle, 50, is the arc plus the arc, 80 plus x, divided by 2. And we're going to solve for x. So we plug in everything, in, in everything that we know into the equation. The angle is the arc plus the arc divided by 2. To get rid of this 2 in the denominator, multiply both sides by 2. These cancel. So I get 80x equals 100. And from here, I subtract 80 from both sides. And I get x equals 20. So this arc is 20 degrees. 20 plus 80 is 100. Divide that by 2, and that gives me the angle. Questions on that example? OK. So when our vertex is inside the circle, the angle equals the arc plus the arc divided by 2. All right. Let's look at our last example, and then we'll be done. So this is for our vertex, um, vertex outside the circle. So we have two secants here intersecting outside the circle. And we know that the measure of angle ABC, this little angle in here, ABC is that angle right here, is 60 degrees. And this arc is 130 degrees. And we want to find the measure of arc x. We want, we want this measure. So our, our formula for our angle when the vertex is outside the circle, the angle equals the arc minus the arc divided by 2. So 60 equals 130 minus x. x is the other arc. And we divide by 2. Now, to get rid of that 2 in the denominator, we multiply both sides by 2. Those cancel. I get 120 equals 130 minus x. I'm going to subtract 130 from both sides. So minus x equals minus 10. So finally, x equals 10. The angle, 60 degrees, equals 130 
minus 10, which is 120, divided by 2. When our vertex is outside the circle, the angle equals the arc minus the arc divided by 2. Questions? Okay, homework. Page 593, 10 through 26. 593. That's, an, that's supposed to be a 9 over there. No. 